Hello and welcome to the second episode of Isco Talks. Now, in the first episode we were talking about electric scooter tires. Now in this episode I'm gonna actually talk about some of the electric scooter repairs where some of them are actually related to electric scooter tires. Now first episode was half an hour long, it was quite long and uh, I'm gonna try and make this episode uh, shorter. As I said, talking about tires, where there are so many different tires and things like that and so much info, it's really hard to make it shorter. Uh, but this should be shorter. Also, what I noticed in the first episode that the uh, sound quality wasn't the best. So hopefully in this episode, the sound quality is going to be better. I did already reorganize my setup a little bit. So uh, hopefully it's going to work better. Now, let's go to the first picture. What are we looking at here? These are motor phase cables on the 9 bot Max G30 that are melted. Why did they melt? Well, they melted because the I had a discussion with uh, with a rider and uh, he was going on a little bit too steep hill. Uh, he was putting a bit more stress on a controller. Controller overheated and it fried. Now we're going to see the same thing now in the second picture, but much, much, much worse. Why this one happened was same scenario, but on top of that, both tires were flat on, on the scooter. Uh, as I said, it's a 9 Max G30 that I already told you, it has a really brilliant, uh, brilliant tires. And the uh, interesting thing is that those tires were actually not punctured at all. Like when the scooter came in, first thing I noticed was the tires were flat, inflated the tires, and unfortunately the scooter needed to stay with us for a little bit longer because we were trying to get a original controller for it, more about it in the next picture. And even a couple of weeks later, those tires were still per perfectly fine. Okay. Like we then, in that case, we didn't replace tires, we left it the way it is, uh, because they know since he was riding su for such a long time on the flat tires and know what to, what to expect when I take tires off. And I didn't mention this last time when I was talking about tires, because it's not a common problem. Like, you know, this, in four years we had just like, you know, maybe five repairs like this, where someone would be riding on a flat tire and then destroying his tube, tire, and frying his controller. It's not a common thing, but it can happen. But that's the reason why I didn't mention it <coughs> last time in the first episode. And now we are going to this picture. So when that scooter came in, we had our, you know, I, we have our supplier and we had our orders in on a way but it would take another roughly six weeks for that to come in. So we decided, okay, like, you know, listen, let's try and get the controller in quickly. Now, I, I, I can't remember, was it Amazon or AliExpress? I'm really not 100% sure. But, you know, it was bought online. It was supposed to be delivered within two weeks. It got delivered, and then it actually wasn't original 9-bot, because you can see here it says 9 not. The housing did say 9-bot. It didn't come in original packaging. It just came in the back instead of coming in uh, original 9-bot packaging. And the uh, housing said 9-bot. But when I put, well, like, you, I look at it, I was like, okay, that's something's wrong because it doesn't look like original controller. I put it under a microscope. I apologize for the bad, bad image quality, but uh, uh, Ninebot uh, on their PCB board, they have a silicone that works as a water protection. If I don't turn on the light on the microscope, you're not going to see anything. If I turn it on, then you have this weird reflection. So I actually need to move uh, just a micros microscope to take a picture actually from a bit bigger distance and then crop a picture in order to get this so the picture is not the best <coughs> anyways um, i went to the seller to place a complaint and then it started like standard online buying procedure it's not happening everywhere but it's happening like you know it would be really common on aliexpress it would happen sometimes on amazon on AliExpress, much more common. Like, 
you know stupid questions just just to make me give up you know for example like oh is your scooter made in china like of course what kind of question is that like nine bot is chinese brand it's chinese company you know and uh, and silly questions like that and like you know uh, that can happen to anyone so like when your local you know mechanic or seller has a bit higher prices this is one of the reasons probably why he needs to verify all the suppliers make sure that he has good parts because when something like this, this happens it's his problem if you buy it it's your problem so you're going to end up maybe cheaper but in a situation like this you're going to be solving that problem not him so you know and there is of, co of course warranty and things like that so yeah it has to be an, a bit more expensive and sometimes it's it's smarter to pay a bit better price now this picture is also related to tires okay so this uh, this is where you know bearings just said you know what this ride became a bit too stressful and we just don't want to be part of it uh, of course joking but like what we are looking here is actually what's left over of ball bearings it was just too too bumpy road like the scooter has now here pneumatic tire fitted but it had solid tires fitted on and then it was changed back to two pneumatic tires i just wanted to show you this because you know <coughs> as i said already like uh pneumatic tires work a little bit uh, like like a suspension okay like they're they're much smoother right once you put solid tires on this is exactly what can happen it's not happening too often but it is happening okay and if you don't replace your bearings on time you'll be replacing your whole motor because in this case scenario when bearings don't exist anymore now the the motor axle is getting really hard hits every time you go over a bump and then it will come to the stage where you know even replacing bearings won't work you just need to replace the whole motor so you saved some money on punctures but you know that money that you saved on punctures you actually might be spending on uh, bearings and on motors if you don't change che check bearings regularly and like you know this would be probably one of the things that would be done in the maintenance like there are a couple of different stages of maintenance you have like a basic maintenance and you know like really big maintenance big maintenance would mean you know opening a motor checking bear checking literally everything on a scooter now on a cheap scooters there is in some way it would be like you know there's no point of doing that because like this procedure would take a couple of hours it could easily cost half of the price of the scooter but on the bigger scooters, like, I don't know, you know, 010X, 60 volt version, or uh, some Dualtron Thunders and, and similar, you know, on the scooters that cost a uh, thousand or even a couple of thousand euros, it's worth doing it, you know. Now, this picture is, uh, is the scooter that I actually talk about in the first episode, the scooter that I love and I hate at the same time. What actually happened here? So here we have a blocked wheel, okay, a blocked motor. So the scooter was actually getting uh, punctures every now and then. <coughs> so I decided, okay, like even with checking tire and tube, I I wouldn't see anything, you know, on a on a tire. But I was like, okay, maybe I'm missing something let's just order new tires and replace them because one of the things that i was thinking like you know it could happen is that the tire is really soft and those motors are actually quite torquey so you know that could be may could maybe be a case so let's try and get better tires and fit better tires on so while i was waiting for the tires the scooter was sitting aside and then when the tires arrived i couldn't move a scooter you know the wheel was blocked and i was like okay maybe it's brakes let's take off a brake caliper no it wasn't brakes i opened the motor and well here you can see it so this is all corroded magnets and while the scooter was being used you know almost every day uh it would kind of sand those 
that corrosion off. When scooter wasn't used for a little bit longer time, corrosion expand, block the motor. And there you go. Now, order to find someone who, who can fix this, and there is never 100% chance that this can be fixed. Maybe it can, maybe it can. I would say it's something like, you know, 50-50. And actually, if you manage to fix it, I would just call that, you know, really being lucky. Other option, repairing a motor. So, what does it say? Like, you know, let's let's call it 50-50 and, 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 and that's it. Now, this, what you're looking here, well, it's not the best picture because the actually camera decided to focus at a totally wrong place. But this here is actually a puddle of water inside of the scooter frame and it's part of this scooter like you can see it here on the bottom uh so like you know quite often people would say oh scooters are waterproof and this and that majority of scooters are not waterproof okay don't fall for that some sellers are going to tell you anything you want to hear just to sell you another is going to tell you i'm selling you a bad product because you're not going to buy it it's that simple so what we have here is water in a battery, in a controller, a bit of a corrosion there in a battery. And like, I was looking like, okay, what happened here? Well, I'm not sure what happened. I'm going to assume that someone opened that scooter to do some kind of a repair and probably didn't properly close it back. Because there is a procedure how you're closing those decks in order to close them correctly. And unfortunately, someone didn't do a job the way it's supposed to be done. And this is it. Like, I'm just now sure, I, I'm, I'm not sure, was it do-it-yourself repair or just the scooter was brought to someone who actually didn't know what he's doing. Anyways, quite lots of damage and uh, probably not even worth repairing unfortunately what we're looking here this is a really <coughs> sorry this is a really interesting picture uh, i remember this scooter it was xiaomi essential with fitted solid tires now i wasn't 100 percent sure oh because here is where the taillight cable goes out and there is a rubber seal and that rubber seal was actually in the middle of the battery compartment the cable was going still out but that rubber seal was here so i wasn't sure that it came like that from the factory even that it's hard to believe that or someone when he was fitting on a solid tire removed that and forgot to put it back and the scooter got the water damage because you know riding in the rain the rear motor rear wheel was actually rear tire was literally throwing water in a battery compartment but it's really interesting to see this actually a water damage sticker still being white now this scooter is uh, on this scooter we are looking at this seal that's missing and that's another place where water can get inside of your scooter it's not going to get there easy. It's a really small hole. And on a, on a newer version of Xiaomi, actually, you have expanding foam here. But, for example, corrosion can still get in there. And I had a case uh, with one of the one of the customers. The, the guy came in with a scooter for... Uh, the scooter wasn't turning on. We opened the scooter and we saw quite lots of water there. So I contacted the customer back and said like i'm sorry but you have a water damage here and he, he went crazy immediately how do i have a water damage and never driven scooter in the rain i'm like well i don't know but like you know this is what i see i have it on cctv i can show you a recording like you know how open the scooter and the water was already there and then we went through 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 a bit of a discussion and asked him like you know are you storing your scooter outside and he was like no 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 i store my scooter in utility room I'm like okay well there you go do you have a tumble dryer in your utility room and he was like yeah and how long are you you know doing washing and drying well every couple of days well there you go or probably that's how it happened you know now another 
another water damage picture corrosion on the battery so this was 011x and uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah it was driven heavily heavily on the rain and uh, it got the water damage unfortunately now that scooter was like replacement battery was around two grand half of the scooter uh, or building a battery would be even more so uh, the guy actually decided to sell it another guy got it and did his own repair on a on a battery he managed to fix a battery uh, in a way that well I wouldn't do it but okay he fixed it the the battery worked and it was uh, apparently it was quite fine never tried it myself I'm just telling you what I heard about it and this is just proving like you know what what water can do to your scooter so be be careful when you're buying a scooter like as I said it's going to be hard to find a scooter that's waterproof if it's not rather take a taxi if it's raining leave your scooter like majority of people are using scooter to go to work and back home like okay you got to work it's raining when you're going home if you can leave a scooter there overnight grab a taxi home or you know take a bus next morning and that's it it's going to save you more money than you can even think about now here we have a do-it-yourself repair that partly went wrong okay uh partly because so this is a xiaomi well it's a xiaomi style so I, I think it sh actually this was a copy of xiaomi scooter it wasn't actually original xiaomi and uh, the guy tried to fix a mudguard that broke and uh, you know on xiaomi you have two screws for the mudguard that come approximately fit here and the third screw, that one in the front, actually is just uh, above your battery. If you have a Xiaomi M265 or a 1S. Yeah, 1S. Uh, and uh, he decided to use the different screws a little bit longer, went through the frame all the way to the battery. Luckily, battery didn't catch a fire. Uh, I'm going to assume that the battery didn't catch a fire because of uh, two reasons. First, it wasn't charged. It was probably almost empty. And second, he didn't penetrate too much into a battery cell. But in this picture, well, we're seeing a totally different story. So that's Xiaomi with the uh, blue cells. Exactly the same thing. The guy tried to fix a mudguard himse himself, pierced uh, one cell, and then just you know it started luckily they managed to stop uh, fire quickly enough uh, but not uh, not before half of the scooter actually burned and here actually I can show you like so this here is a temperature sensor not many scooters have smart BMSs with temperature sensors to monitor a battery and all of them that are not using that, I wouldn't consider too safe. I'm not going to say that they are not safe. I'm just going to say that the ones that do have a temperature sensor are much, much safer. At least, my opinion, you know. So, that's going to be all for this episode. I hope it was better and I hope that you enjoyed it more uh, than maybe a previous one. At least, hopefully, the sound quality was better. So, at the end of this episode, friendly advice, okay, it's not that, like, you know, that is not too good to do repair yourself. If you don't have any other option, do repair yourself. But be extremely careful, okay? Uh, use original parts, use original screws. There's a reason why that screw is that particular size, that short, that narrow, or whatever there is a reason for that so and if you do it that way and you follow all the procedures if you manage to find a video or uh, or a post in some form where every single step is described you should be fine if you're not sure it's still cheaper to bring it to someone who knows what he's doing than potentially to make even bigger damage 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. Uh, we're going to see what we're going to talk about in the next episode, but I'm really shortly, I want to bring you a buyer's guide to help you with buying scooters, especially secondhand, because I did a couple of mistakes myself. And there's coming, uh, there's also going to come an episode about electric scooter safety. But that's all for now, folks. Uh, I'll be recording pretty soon and uploading again. If you still haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Turn on bell notification. And share this video to whoever you think it's going to be useful. That's all. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.